Hi, thank you for joining the CSI podcast today, talking about the subject of banter. Uh, my name is Helen Anderson. I lead the global marketing and communications team for the CISI. And joining me today is... Stella Chandler. Thank you very much for having me, Helen. I am the Director of Development for Focal Point Training and Consultancy, and I've been in that role for just over 20 years now. Thank you, Stella. So tell me a bit more about Focal Point's work in this area um, and what you've done so far. Well, Focal Point is a is traditionally a management and leadership consultancy. And it was 18 years ago, to be precise, that my business partner and I realised that there was a behaviour going on in organisations that hadn't quite crossed the line and became discriminatory or harassment, but was actually affecting people in the way that they were able to be creative and contribute to teams. When we dug into this a bit more, we found that behaviour was the kind of thing that people will often describe as banter. And through using that word, sort of just passing it off and not being willing to recognise that that had a really detrimental effect on people in their teams. People have quite a strong opinion on what they think about banter, don't they? They really do. They really do. And most people's reaction, first of all, is to think that, I don't know how you say, we're, we're you know, trying to stop them having fun, we're killjoys or something like that. But there are two sides to banter, and I recognise entirely that when the banter is allowing people to have fun, it brings down those barriers, and that's great. You know, teams, you know, relax more and enjoy each other's company. But there is a line, and when it crosses that line, people start to feel uncomfortable, and those barriers go back up. So it's the bad banter, if you like, which is what we want to raise people's awareness of and just stop and think about what the impact can be on other people. And there's a significant link here to mental health as well, isn't there? I really, really believe there is. And I think if anybody listening to this can stop and think, if they've been given a nickname that they don't like, and we know that goes on a lot, they have become the butt of an ongoing joke. They can be introduced perhaps to new people in their team by reference to something that's gone on which wasn't great for them yes absolutely and I think if we've never been on the receiving end of that it's harder to see it but if we have been then I think a lot of people will recognize those emotions that stir up which are frequently negative emotions and it's very societal as well. There are things that we've just accepted over time and become part of the norm, aren't they? Oh, completely and utterly. And I realise, you know, when I started at work, if there was something said to you and you didn't like it, and it often was the kind of things that were banter, then phrases like, you know, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And then you just knew then you just had to put up with it. Indeed, indeed. What, what, what would you define as banter if we were to look for, for one definition? I think it's something that has made people feel uncomfortable. Well, we did some joint research on this this year, didn't we? Um, we did. Focal Point Training and the CISI. Um, and we sent out surveys to people. Um, and if you're not opted in to CISI's uh, surveys, please do that on your communications dashboard on your MyCSI profile, because we do ask some really interesting questions. And we had 750 responses to that survey. So we were really chuffed with that. Mm, Just um, to give some context to everybody listening, we had 43% of those respondents were female um, and 55% were male and we had actually quite a wide range of age ranges respond as well. Um, so great response to the research that was earlier in 2022 and we're still learning from that. There was lots of um, stories and narratives and scenarios that people were, were, were really honest and they really told us what their experiences were. Some were quite honestly horrific and, and others oh, wow. you know people as I say had very strong opinions um, so thank you for your part in helping us um, look at the results for that and, and conducting that survey I think it's a really important topic um, for us to do but you also do lots of training in this area as well don't you? We do and I think I'd really like to make the point that the vast majority of people in the workplace do not intend to offend or upset people and one of my, you know, endearing moments really in, in this line of work is when somebody comes up to me, having heard me speak or run a training session, and actually comes into it and says, I never realised I was the perpetrator of what we call now bad banter. And that's, again, it's about getting that message out and just getting people to stop and think. And a very, very common one in teams is when we give people nicknames. 
And if the nickname is an obviously, you know, bad word, a swear word or anything like that, people will perhaps spot that. But if it's not, it's just an ordinary recognisable word, people often think it's quite an endearing thing to give a nickname to somebody. Now, I'm the daughter of a man who prefers to use his nickname than his real name. So I feel I'm in quite a strong position here to understand the difference between a nickname we like and want and one that is just given to us. Most people do not choose their nickname and then find it difficult to stop others talking about it. Now, again, if you've never had a nickname or you happen to be like my dad that's got a nickname you like then again you'll probably think we're just talking a load of rubbish if you've been given a nickname and it relates to something that makes you feel uncomfortable in any way you will understand this and then there's all that stuff that if you actually want to say something or raise it unless you've got somebody willing to support you the chances are you then get just told off for not having a sense of humor and you just again feel you've just got to go and accept it so you know Individually, these things often feel, as I say, maybe maybe no no big deal. But actually, as I say, and I know I've said this several times, but if you're on the receiving end of that and it's gone on for a while, you will really recognise what we're trying to talk talk about here. For sure. Um, and and to use the word victim is is a strong word, isn't it? Because uh, you know people won't necessarily feel that they're victimised by by bad banter. But um, it is, you know, whether you're the recipient um, or the intended, you know, target, if you like, of the bad banter, or whether you're watching other people do it. I mean, the, there are, you know, where, at what point do other people intervene? And Yeah, absolutely. And I think actually, as you rightly say, victim is a strong word. But as you've referred to, some of those free text responses that we got to the survey were just appalling. And my heart goes out to people in so many ways. I mean, if you just think about the comments, the amount of comments where people shared that they get nicknames and jokes about their weight. And that's an incredibly personal thing. And again, when we read some of those, I just, you know, I kind of think I've been you know, looking at this subject now for quite some years. I've probably seen it all. But reading again some of those things and the way that people, you know, labelled. There was there, somebody shared that they'd actually had their boots labelled with a reference to their name and their weight. And that is just shocking. And, you know, it's really sad to think that those colleagues around them did not see anything wrong in that thought it was a good laugh and did nothing about it. It, it, I mean, it's just awful when we read, read some of the replies back. Um, we have to acknowledge, Stella, that for some people, banter plays quite an important role um, in creating a sense of camaraderie. You know, we I run a big team and, and, and they also, you know, there's lots of banter that's used um, in both a, a domestic environment but also an international environment as well. Um, when asked if banter was necessary to build a su- successful team dynamic, 29% of those that responded to us said they agreed or completely agreed. And 34% said they agreed somewhat. Mm -hmm. Um, So is zero tolerance advisable? Um, It's no secret that that perhaps the newer generations coming through, the Gen Zs, are perhaps more sensitive to uh, an office or what what has been seen as traditional office culture. Um, Will we destroy some of the reasons people come into the office um, with this type of approach? What do you think? Absolutely. And that's why I think we need to go back. And actually, and this is what worries me, that people think we are trying to ban it. It's not at all that. I love people making me laugh and I get a real buzz when I've made others laugh. So I, I absolutely get that. And I love it in my own team. And if I'm running a training session or something like that, The point we're saying here is when that banter, the laughing has, and I know it's this sort of thing in our minds in a way, but we we call it crossing the line. It's when it started to make people feel uncomfortable. That's the point. Now, the training that we do is to raise awareness. We absolutely want people to go out of our sessions knowing it's okay to have a laugh. And that's actually what we want. We want them, though, to have that raised awareness that they do need to stop and think about what we will call that that bad banter, that banter that has crossed the line and is starting to make people feel uncomfortable. Sorry if I keep repeating those words, but I think it's helpful for people just to stop and really think, what what is it? And and how would I know that I've done that? And the answer again to that question is just being willing to reflect, look around us, see the impact it's made on people. But I think if we'd all just stop and thought about some of the things we do say to colleagues, 
very often we can see for ourselves, hang on a sec, how did that person get that nickname? Hang on a sec, that's a joke that's been around far, far too long. We've got a whole range of examples of where people have been introduced to somebody completely new. It, was, it wasn't even in their organisation when a particular incident happened, but they're introduced to somebody with a reference to something old, you know, way beyond. What we want to do in our, our training as well is give people some practical things that they can do. And I think for me, one of the, you know, my sort of favourite ones is I'm saying to people, if something happens today, we're going to have a laugh about it. That's fine. But actually, equipping line managers with skills like, you know, let's say it's the following day and there's a reference to that incident that happened yesterday. I just say to people, you know, just say something like, that was yesterday's joke. Let's have a new one today. Now, I've had great feedback on tips like that because it allows people to still have a bit of that laugh and a joke at the time something happens. And people have actually said to me, when those guidelines and things are in place in their team, if they do do something silly, they're okay because they think, all right, well, today I've just got to take a bit of it. But actually, I know come tomorrow, this team have got that rule guideline, whatever you want to say, that we're not going to keep referring to things. So if you can introduce some of those practical things, it allows us still to have a laugh and a joke. As we said, that is really good. But it also gives people that reassurance that this isn't going to be something that is constantly referred to. I mean, often it's it's where the line is, isn't it? And and often that's different for different people. Um, however, the the survey that we did and the, and the research that we've done um, said that ninety seven percent of people that responded to us that's ninety seven percent of the seven hundred and fifty said that they had been made uncomfortable by banter at some point. Why do you think this is so high? Oh, I know that, and thank you for talking about that particular figure because I think that figure above all else, and a phrase I used kept just swilling round and round in my head. And I think it actually does bring it back. Now, that was, as you're right, a sliding scale. For some people, it was an, a lot. They, they answered that, you know, happens most of the time. For others, it was a, a, a more occasional thing. But it just goes to show, I do believe, how prevalent this kind of humour is and how, as I say, if we don't put any of those kind of guidelines I've just been talking about in place, how that really does perpetuate and go on. And, you know, we've had loads of examples of people saying, you know, they've come into a team and because that is gone on, they think picking up on those jokes, perpetuating them, some of which they acknowledge they don't even understand, but is part of their getting into the team which again, on some occasions it can be, but more times than not, actually what we're doing there is just perpetuating something that is going on that has made people feel uncomfortable. Mm, joining a team is, is you know, you, you, you're you working out what the culture is, aren't you? You're Absolutely. working out, you know, where you yeah. fit, what mm. your role is. Um, it, it's, it's astonishing. Um, but that figure is really high, um, you know, and I had to sit and think, if someone asked me, had I made been made uncomfortable? Yeah, many times, I mm -hmm. suppose I have. But mm -hmm. again, there is that, or has been the culture, that you roll with the punches. Um, mm. and, and, you know, you, you just, until you work out where you stand and, and what influence you have, um, mm. you, you just got to take it on the chin, if you like. I mean, there are so many sayings, aren't there, that, that <laughs> link to this subject um, that, you know, and... And again, I had to reflect on my own behaviour, you know, what what had I said in the past that maybe have affected other people? And I'm sure I have upset people in the past and, and never been, it's never been intentional mm. or malice, mm. but um, with any malice. But yeah, it's, it's really exactly. interesting. Exactly. And, you know, there are those people, I do believe they're a small minority that will look for things deliberately to call people. And as I say, some of those, you know, some of those really nasty examples Clearly, people should have, you know, should have known that those were offensive. But I say the vast majority of occasions, it is unintended. And again, what we are asking people to do, two things, is to take that responsibility that we will reflect on our behaviour. And as I always say to people, I've been working in this area for years and I acknowledge I could still say something that could cause offence. What I do want to be able to do, though, is behave in a way that people would feel they could tell me and I would be willing to learn from it. And I would you know, always, of course, you'd expect me to say that, but would give that undertaking. I would never say that word or you know, perpetuate the nickname or the joke in any way. So that's the first thing. 
And the second thing is, and this is what we really, really want to see happening in organisations, is an agreement and an understanding that the other responsibility we have is to say something if we are feeling uncomfortable. Now, that is as wide as that definition is. And as I always say to people, you may feel you yourself can just go to the person that's you know, made you feel uncomfortable. You and they can just deal with it, end of. But there could be a whole range of reasons why you may not feel you want to do that. And we're not going to question them in any way. What we are going to ask you to do, though, is to go and speak to somebody who can do something about it. The quicker we can deal with some of these things, the better for everybody. That great phrase, nip something in the bud, is so, so true. More times than not, then, if somebody who has said something and, you know, as, as offensively, if they're told swiftly, they're far more likely to respond positively and you know, do the right thing. And I think some of these things that fester for a long time and then somebody says, oh, you know, months and months ago, et cetera, et cetera, that often then is far more difficult to unpick and get a good resolution. But so if we can get the conversation going in the right kind of way, the vast majority of people will be willing to accept the feedback and to change their behaviour. Thank you, Stella. I think that's a great message. The nature of work has changed so dramatically in the last few years. Um, dare I even mention the pandemic um, and, and you know, the, the vast change in kind of working patterns and, and how we join things like meetings and how those meetings are conducted. Um, often, you know, with moving on to Microsoft Teams with my own team meetings, it can be a bit of a leveller. I have an international team. It then makes everybody equal in the room. It's not a team of people in one location and a few people on the screen, it's everybody on the screen. Um, but that environment sometimes makes it even harder to contribute. There's sort of an etiquette, isn't there? Put your hand up or, um, you know, and 69% of the people that we surveyed said that they now contribute less in meetings because of banter. Um, I mean, does this chime with the research and, and the people that you talk to about this subject? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why it is so crucial that people that are leading meetings really are aware of the best way of managing those meetings and making sure that people really do feel included. And you're absolutely right. Of course, things have changed. And to a point, I'm not surprised we all went into, you know, the pandemic for, you know, it was a totally new experience for, you know, the way we had to live. And I remember early on having a meeting with a client and she was sat in her bedroom. And immediately it just struck me that we, we're seeing into people's lives in a way that we would never have done before. So I think to some point we were all, you know, it, you know, it was a very anxious time in so many ways. And I think, you know, some of that humour, of course, helped us all get through. But I can also see those barriers, or not, you know, the barriers, but the distinctions that we've had in our lives between our places of work and our home places, those were blurred and, it, and will, will continue to be. So again, our message is open up those conversations about what's acceptable and what's not and how the team are going to work together. And if we can get those conversations going, I think a lot of the, you know, the positives that has come out of the new ways that we can work, we can make the most of those and not have people feel uncomfortable because they are having to join Teams meetings perhaps from their bedroom because that's their workspace. It is doable. I really believe it's doable, but it's getting those conversations open about what's okay and what's not and giving every member of the team, I love what you said about that great leveller, every member of the team, that opportunity to join in that conversation and set those guidelines. The teams that we work with, where we can get them having those conversations, creating, you know, a summary, we often call that a team charter, bullet points, just about how we're going to work together, we think are the happiest teams. We also thought the results to that question would be less, far less, didn't we? Mm. Because um, there's perhaps less opportunity for banter on a, on a, in a call environment. When you're in a meeting uh, room and, the, and there's lots of you coming in the room, you've got that three or four minutes as you go into the room and the small talk and then and then the banter after mm. as you mm. as you sort of depart the meeting room. Um, so in in a hybrid, well, certainly in a virtual environment, there's less that you kind of 
hit the off button, don't you? You're gone. <laughs> um, there's less room for a kind of a chat at the end, so p- potentially less space for bad banter. But um, but w- the results certainly didn't reflect that, did yeah, it? Yeah, and I think it's also thinking about the variety of communication methods that we have these days as well. And only a week or so ago, somebody was talking to me about how the instant messaging is often the way where that banter is you know manifesting itself and again people think something might be funny there's a quick fire response not realizing again they're just perpetuating things they're you know they're seeing it as being funny not actually realizing hang on a sec how's this landing with other people now again I don't want to stop all of that what I do want though is people just to stop and think about how it should be being used I was brought up with that great phrase I didn't understand when it was first said to me I don't know, I'd have been in single figures at that time. But my mum used to say to me, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And I think, again, if we just were all willing just to stop and think about some of the things we say, turn it around, we might then get a clue as to the impact that's potentially having on other people. 60% of people in the survey said that banter means they don't put forward new ideas. I know. Why do you think that is? Well, again, I think it's for all the reasons we talk about. And I think actually I'd like to make that link as well. So many people, don't they? They talk about engagement. They do a huge amount of activities about that. We talk about attracting talent and all of that. But they don't stop and think. And again, you know, your example is about what's going on in meetings. Meetings are, we know, when we bring people together online or, or, or in a room, those are often when people really spark because they're, they're hearing the thoughts of other people. We know how that happens and they combine their thoughts. But if we're losing that potential impact, just a phrase here and there, that's sometimes all it takes for a team to come up with a really good idea. But if we're losing any of that, then yeah, the, you know, we're really missing a great opportunity. And I think that goes on far, far more than the majority of people appreciate. I mean, banter sometimes affects some of us quite viscerally. Um, You know, you can almost see it wounding people as it's happening. Sometimes you can't. Um, You know, 40% of our respondents told us that after feeling uncomfortable with banter, they'd actually gone out and looked for a new job. Um, You know, how positive or inclusive a culture within a team is will undoubtedly affect why people move on. Um, People don't leave a job necessarily, it can be salary related, but it's normally because they don't want to work with those people anymore. Or um, we've seen many research projects on that. But um, is this the kind of hidden or unspoken risk and and should HR teams be monitoring this, managing this, advising on this? What's your advice? Absolutely. Um, I think, again, very good phrases about it being the hidden risk. I think, you know, people just are not, and again, I'll probably end up sounding like a stuck record, won't I? But people are just not taking a step back and really thinking about what goes on. It's not even hour by hour, it is minute by minute in our teams because it is those interactions that are the interactions that make make people feel, I don't really want to contribute. Somebody, again, in our survey, and we've had this countless times in the sessions we've run, they said, you know, if they say anything, somebody else in the team makes a reference to their nickname. Now, if you don't like your nickname, and by the way, I spent quite some time trying to shake off being called Artois. <laughs> um, you know, if you just think, oh, no, if I say that, X over there is going to say, oh, Artois up raising a hand again just get worn down and again it seems sounds all very small things but these really do accumulate and I know I remember sitting there it was actually particularly manifested itself on a holiday it was a skiing holiday it should have been a great time but there was somebody that just wanted to go on and on about Artois. Now, it's not an offensive name, called Stella Artois. It's a very nice beer, I think. <laughs> but I just like, oh, no. And every reference she could make to the beer and the price of the beer and how often it was going to be served. And there were some rather less savoury kinds as well. It just, it did. I remember sitting there thinking, Do you know, I just think I'll sit here, keep quiet because then I won't have it open it all up again. So I know how that feels in what should have been a really enjoyable environment. It just wore me down. Mm, this has 
particular re relevance as well for the, the work the CRSI are now looking to do in sort of socioeconomic diversity or looking at, you know, social mobility where people with different accents or, yeah. or different backgrounds or neurodiverse, you know, offerings, um, you know, they, they are particularly vulnerable in this area, aren't they? Because, um, you know, they're, they're already facing, you know, their own challenges. Um, and, and in a team environment, that can be very difficult if that's then layered with people um, with bad banter. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's, there's a, you know, a number of comments that came out, which again, just shocking. And it was interesting. It was the one's two that stick really in my mind from our research was where it was talking about senior managers particularly taking making fun of people's accent and then that absolutely horrific example of senior managers as they said dressing up in national costume but to make fun of people's accents like I, I'm just you know again I think I've seen most of it I was just horrified that in 2022 there are still people around that actually thought that was funny <laughs> which is it's just horrific and you made a, a comment a moment or so ago about a HR as an ex-HR manager I was really shocked and disappointed now I'm conscious this is not everybody of course but a lot of comments about HR not getting hold of this topic properly. There were examples in there about HR themselves in their own teams not having a proper, you know, response. I don't want to use that formal words about the code of conduct. But, you know, if HR teams aren't behaving appropriately, you know, where do we go to for our, our sort of role models on, on behaviour? So, yeah, I was very disappointed by my fellow colleagues. And again, some specific examples about HR just perpetuating the jokes and, you know, just telling people to get over it, grow up and stuff like that, which I do find very shocking. So, yeah, a call out to my fellow professionals. Look at your own teams first, but then make sure that, you know, you really are responding properly when people do come and raise concerns. Mm, particularly when that takes a lot of courage to do that, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it, it does. It yeah. does. Which is why I mentioned the Speak Up materials the CRSI have. So if anyone wants to, to have a look at that, just, just forward slash Speak Up on the CRSI website, just so you can have a look, um, wh whether that be about, you know, many different things within financial services, but but this could be one of them. Completely. Um, and my, my, you know, my plea as well would be, if you are, you know, the subject of a nickname or it's a joke that's been going on for something, please, please don't just sit there and think, oh it's nothing it really is something I should just put up with because our research is showing that you're not alone and we really do need to do something about this and and other things we could perhaps appeal to to the people listening is if there are other people in the team that you know that have a nickname or has anyone ever asked them you know do, does that bother you I mean are those kind of questions that are they things people could to, could do to help brilliant and I would just take don't ask somebody in front of other people. I've seen that for many, many times. And it kind of like goes, oh, Helen, how do you feel about being called four eyes? And then you're sat there and you're looking around for all your other colleagues and go, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And then, go, oh, all right, fine, Helen's fine with that. Uh, you know, again, I, you know, I don't make light of that. But talk to a colleague and really, really press because the script does often go, no, it's fine, it's fine. Are you sure? Yes. Are you really sure? Well, maybe not. Um, and, you know, I think there's been a few Speak Up campaigns which actually taught, remind people that it, we just got to ask that question again and really check that out. But do it on a one-to-one -one basis. And if you do then, you know, like my dad, he would say, he would be horrified if I went home and said, Dad, you've got to be called by your own your own name. <laughs> I know. I completely know he's, he's there. But, you know, nine times out of ten when I have done this, if not more than that, the person has said to me, no, they didn't want their nickname, but they'd grown to accept it and get on with it. So, yes, that would be a great takeaway from this. If you were to stop and think about a colleague that has been given a nickname and, you know, I think, do they really, really like it? And actually, I had a, a lovely time just a few weeks ago. Um, the daughter of a close friend of mine asked to have a coffee. She just started working in London, so we met up. And as really sweet. She said to me, I don't really understand what focal point does. Can you tell me? So 
started to talk to her about it. And then I started to talk to her about our banter survey. And as I was doing this, her eyes widened. And she said, oh my gosh. So she plays in a women's rugby team. And as often happens in sporting teams, they had all given each other nicknames. And she gave me a couple of examples. And she said, and again, not offensive words at all. Um, but she said, I have never stopped and thought, did they like those nicknames? And a couple of them, where <laughs> she talked through them, I, was, I won't give those examples, it wouldn't be fair to her at this point. But um, she went away from that conversation that day, committing to going and talking. And I did say to her, do it one by one. Talk to the other players and just really check whether they are all okay. And she's got her money on two of them, won't like their nicknames, but have gone along with it. So, you know, it happens. It must be happening everywhere. Yeah. It happens. And Well, again, I'm quite a sporty person. I've done a lot of sport activity and I think it does happen a lot in sporting environments, which again, there's a thought where we got to take it. And to a point, yeah, there's a bit, you know, there is a bit of humour around that. But again, I think talking more and more to people about this, they don't, they don't know how to stop it very often, that sort of changing room, joking, which is, you know, it, it's not acceptable, really, and we should stop and think again. Mm -hmm. Have we had time with that? And you don't have to be in a position of power. You don't have to be a manager to call out the behaviour, do you? I mean, it really just can be some someone as simple as, you know, just be kind. There's a big be kind agenda out there at the moment, um, a link to mental health again. And I'll just stress that the CSI do have a mental health portal um, that, that members can, and the whole financial services community can tap into where they, they may have you know be tipped over the edge um when it comes to and looking after just, themselves yeah and another just nice sort of tip and technique which we've given to many teams i you know and i mentioned this to the to my um rugby playing friend is as a team just to agree a word that if anybody feels uncomfortable they can just say that word so one of the teams i worked with the word they identified was pineapple and the moment somebody said that, obviously not because I go and shop you for some pineapples and all, but you know, <laughs> but just as a, you know, in that moment, and they're quite a sociable team and we're often going out for drinks. So that's often again quite when, you know, people relaxed a bit more and perhaps, you know, those lines were crossed. But if anybody said pineapple, the whole team knew that conversation had to stop. That was it. And again, some things like that, of course, you know, as a manager, if something like that has happened, we should then be following up and doing a bit more. But at least in that moment, that's a good technique just to you know, call something out. And yeah, absolutely. Everybody in the team felt able to do that. That's a great piece of advice. I can see teams all over the country uh, and, and our international <laughs> membership using that word right now. Um, so this is so interesting. We could talk about this for another hour, I'm sure. Um, the CSI plans to do some more work with Focal Point Training in this area. We really want to bring together some of the HR managers um, and the learning development managers across financial services to look at, you know, what we can do within firms to help support you know, on looking and, and raising awareness, as we said at the start of the podcast today. Um, so just want to leave the floor to you for just one final thought, one final plea for for why we uh, were talking about this today. Um, so just what, what message would you give? Thank you, Helen. We'd be delighted to carry on working with you. Thank you. I would just ask every person just to stop and think their colleagues do they have nicknames? Have they become that butt of that ongoing joke? So let's give them a Christmas present and let's just stop and ask them and check really how they feel about that. Lovely, Stella. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you.